increase, staying positive for increase. I believe that before we can actually experience increase, we need to know how to stay positive. We need to be positive. And of course, there are a lot of things that we know they're going on presently, but that should not stop us from being positive. And I pray that tonight, to this morning, sorry, the Lord will minister to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now I'm going to take my focus scripture from Romans chapter 4, from verse 18 to 21. Romans chapter 4, from verse 18 to 21. And I, because I like so much to read the New Living Translation, that's what I'm going to read this morning. Romans chapter 4, from verse 18 to 24. It says, even when there was no hope, no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God has said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham, and Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about a hundred years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead. And so was Sarah's womb. Abraham, that's verse 20. Abraham never wavered in his believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And this he brought, and in this he brought glory to God. And verse 21, which is going to be my last verse. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And I know that these words may look like, oh, this was Abraham. But there are a lot of lessons we can learn from these Bible passage. I won't start with that. But let me ask you a question. Why do we find it hard to be positive? Why do we find it hard to be positive? The scriptures are not on. Why do we find it hard to be positive? Why? Why do there are a lot of reasons why we find it hard to be positive? That was Romans chapter 4, 18 to 21. Romans chapter 4, verse 18 to 21. So why do we find it hard to be positive? Why? There are a lot of reasons why we find it hard to be positive. Some, I remember someone told me a story, not, a, I did, not someone told me, but it, it wasn't a story, but someone said this to me. Her mother had been sick for a very long time, and she's been in the hospital. They've been trying to do everything possible to make sure that she gets better. But at a point, it was not getting better. And this morning, her mother woke up and said, I'm tired of everything. I'm tired, I'm fed up of everything. She did not make the next day. When she went to bed, that was the end. She was gone. So sometimes there are a lot of reasons why we do not want to stay positive or we do not want to remain positive. Maybe your health was hit hard. Your health was hit so hard, so badly that you think, I can never survive this. And because you think you can never survive it, you don't survive it. Now, and the core reasons I believe why we do not actually stay positive is because we don't believe in the God we actually serve. The Bible says demons believe in God and they tremble. But the children of God do not believe in God. We don't believe. We say we do, but we really don't. We may open our mouth and tell people, you know, I believe in God, but we don't. Because when things begin to hit you so hard, you begin to do things that you did not even think you can do. And we're not fully trusting in God as we should. You know, we don't completely rely on God. And these are reasons why we don't stay positive. We don't believe or we're not truly trusting in God's abilities that God can do anything. There is nothing that God cannot do. Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing that God cannot do. We're talking about COVID and everything and the whole world is shaking. I tell you, if the whole world do come together as one and believe and have that faith, God will do the impossible because he is God. But we're all scared. Everyone is scared. Of course, we're praying. People are praying. Everyone is trying, oh, God, please do this. But we don't really believe in the ability of the God that we have. Because if we do, we will know that there is nothing God cannot do. We see our problems greater than our God. 
we see problems bigger than our God. You know, you, you just said something during the prayer, and the, when you were taking the opening prayer about someone waking up in the morning and that person just begin, begin to cry. You know, sometimes because the problems are visible and God is not, you can see the problem. The problem you can see. Oh, I have this problem is against me. Oh, I don't have money in my account. I don't have this. I don't have that. You can't see the problem. But God, you cannot see. So because you cannot see God and you can see the problem, there is, that is why that happens a lot of times. Because we don't believe. We, we, we see God as just being very little. Like God is somewhere. He's, you know, maybe he's seated in heaven and he does not care about us. You know, I like this song. I, I, I sing this song every time because of the power that is in that song. It says, God is able to do just what he says he will do. is gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on god cause he won't give up on you he's able oh 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 So God is able. And that I like the way the, the songwriter puts the song. He says, don't give up on God because God is not going to give up on you. You're the only person who can give up on God and then that's it. So if you see someone just kind of like maybe end their lives or do something they should not do, it's because they gave up on God. It was not because God gave up on them. God would never give up on an individual. He would always try as much as possible to make sure an individual is saved. So the, the song I really like, say, I mean, I really like that song because it says, do not give up on God. God is able. Whatever it is you're going through, God is able. Can you tell yourself God is able? Say to yourself again, say God is able. Say to yourself as if you mean it. Say, God is able. God is able. And we have a lot of lesson to glean from Abraham's story in Romans chapter 4. The Bible says in that verse 18, it says, Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. There was no reason. You know when you say no reason? No reason means no reason. There is no reason. Why am I hoping? No reason. Because Abraham was, was already 90. Even when God met with him at 75 and God told him, oh, you know, I'm going to give you a child. There was even no hope at that time. And then he was 90 and still believing there was no hope. There was no reason to hope. Okay, if Abraham could actually produce a child, how about Sarah? There was no hope no hope the bible says even when there was no reason not one not one reason not one abraham still continued to hope he still continued to believe that if god said something god is going to do whatever god says he had no reason so what are the odds that were against him his body was dead Sarah's body was also dead. Those were the odds. And there are a lot of odds against us today. You don't have money. You have a big dream, but no way to accomplish it. You want to do this, but there's just no way. You want to make progress, you don't have a college degree. You want to try this, but nothing. There is a lot of odds. And some people are battling with challenges in health. Their health is not, they're nowhere when it comes to their health. The challenges have torn them apart completely. Some people, their homes, their marriages, their families are completely torn apart. There is no reason to hope. No reason. If you remember, I actually shared a story with you. And that was a long time ago, but I could actually repeat the story. Because 
one of the odds that could actually come against a, a person could be maybe if someone dies. That is an odd. Because when people die, there is no hope. But I remember that someone shared this story with me when I was in Nigeria. And the person said that a man was traveling and then on the highway, he had an accident and the man died. So, you know, when people die on the highway, they take them to the nearest hospital. At that hospital, they put him in the mug. But then in that hospital, when they actually confirmed the man dead, there was a nurse in that hospital who kept on saying this man is not dead. She, kept, she did not know the man. I tell you, these were people who died on the highway. So it wasn't that she was related to him. They were coming all the way from Lagos when that thing happened. But she said, she looked at the man and said, this man is He's not dead. And the doctors and everyone confirmed the man dead. They looked at her and thought, you must be totally insane. But they took the, the body and went and put it in the morgue. And then they put it in the morgue. And this lady, this nurse, would go because it was the general hospital. And it was very close to the morgue. She would go every day to the morgue to open the apartment. The, 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 let me not say apartment, maybe the apartment where the guy was sleeping <laughs> because they were yet to claim that body. So she goes there, open it, and look inside to see if the guy was still alive. And the people at the mall, because they know her, they were always thinking, what is wrong with you? She went the first day, she went back to work. The second day, she got back there and went to pull the man's body. And the man was still dead. And she went back home. On the third day, she went there again and pulled the body. The man was still dead. She went. And on the fourth day, she opened the body. <laughs> the man was still dead. But she closed the mark. I mean, she closed the, the, compa the compartment. And as she got to the door, she heard a shaking. She heard a shaking. And she felt, what was that noise? She turned, went back to the place. And his eyes were open. And you know, I pray for you today, and I pray for myself that there will be a shaking. You will hear a noise, no matter what the odds are. And that is that song I also love that says, I hear a sound. There is a shaking. The mighty power of a sovereign God is moving. Every dry bone is rising up again. Every dry bone is rising up again. I hear a sound, the rain of abundance. There is a shift in the atmosphere. Every dry bone is rising up again. Every dry bone is rising up again. Now, you may say to me, well, someone told you that. Not because someone told me that, but because we were actually driving back from, wo wo from work when the man that died for four days passed. And someone waved to him then told me that story and said, do you see that man that just waved to me? He was dead for four days, and we call him Lazarus. I pray for you today. The odds may be against you. Things may not be working for you. But the almighty God, who sits in the heaven and rules in the affairs of man, may he change your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. May there be a turn around in the name of Jesus. May there be a shift in the atmosphere. In the mighty name of Jesus, may heaven attend to you in Jesus' mighty name. So the odds were against Abraham, but the Bible says he hoped against hope. Today, hope 
against hope. Children of God, hope against hope because God can still do something. Now, let's look at the steps you need to take in order to stay positive for increase. There are steps you need to take for you to be able to stay positive for God to give you that increase that you're looking for. Abraham was looking for an increase and he had to stay positive. Now there are steps you need to take and I'm just going to talk about four steps that you need to take to be positive. Step one, believe in the God of increase. Believe. And that word believe goes a long way. Believe in the God of increase. Believe in the God of increase. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 6 to 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 7. This is what Paul said. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything. Neither either water it, but God that give it the increase. So it is not the one who plants. It is not the one who waters. It is God who gives the increase. It is not how many times or hours you put to work. It is not how many jobs that you have to do. It is not how many savings that you have or how much you, sorry, how much you had to save. It is God who gives increase. And God is the God of increase. You want to believe in him. Believe. Believe is a very strong word. Believe means you don't have any alternatives. God is your only alternative. You believe that if God does not do this for me, then no one can. That is belief. And I told you earlier that the demons believe it. They tremble. They know that God can do anything. But they try to put these obstructions in, on our path so we're not able to trust God as we should. But believe in God. Because Paul said it there. He said, I have planted apollos had watered but god god does what he gives the increase it is god who's gonna breathe on whatever it is you do it is god who's gonna breathe on your work it is god who's gonna breathe on your sacrifice it is god who's gonna breathe on your service it is god who's gonna breathe on what you have and when god does that you will receive an increase Praise the Lord. So believe in God, in the God of increase. Number two, step two, declutter your mind. Declutter your mind. Declutter your mind. What does it mean to declutter? It means to remove the mess. Remove the mess in your mind. A lot of us have a lot of mess. You have anger, bitterness, hatred you have so much and when we have a lot on our mind there is little space for God to feel if your mind is filled with anxiety it's filled with troubles it's filled with fear it's filled with eggs oh someone oh she she did this to me last year oh we did this to me yeah, da, da. and you give people spaces in your heart and they're not even paying they're just occupying your heart. Someone does something to you, and you continue to ponder and ponder and ponder over that. What you were doing is allowing someone to stay in your heart without paying. They're not paying rent. And the people that are not paying, they are at home sleeping or doing something. But you continue to give them a space in your heart. You give little space to God and more space to those people. If you look at the book of Matthew chapter 3, chapter 6, 31 to 32, Matthew 6, 31 to 32, and I like a lot, I like living translation, so you know what, I, I take my scriptures from New Living Translation. It says, so don't worry about these things, saying, these were the words of Jesus, what we will eat, what will we drink, what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of the unbelievers. But your heavenly Father 
already knows all your needs. I love, you see, I love the latter part of that scripture. Number, what I love there is the fact that Jesus says, your heavenly father. Jesus qualifies God in a special way so you can have a better understanding. He says, your heavenly father already knows. God already knows. Before you wake up, God knows what you need. Before you go to bed, God knows what you need. I don't know if this has happened to you, but it's happened to me a lot of times. Sometimes I want to go get groceries, and God will say, why don't you give me some time? And I'm in a hurry. I want to go get those groceries because I have to get them. I go there, I get the groceries, I come home, and someone brings the same thing. Everything I bought everything someone brings the same thing to me everything i bought and then god tells me did i not tell you to give me time to meet this need praise the lord and it has happened to me not once not twice not thrice not four times so god he says your heavenly father knows if we as earthly parents when our kids were younger we did not have to ask them if they wanted something we buy those things why? Because we know they need them. They don't have to tell you, oh, I need to wear clothes, I need to change my shoes. You look at them and say, look, she's getting taller, I need to get her another clothes. Oh, her legs are getting bigger, I need to get him another shoe. If we, as earthly parents, know what to do when our kids are in need, how much more your heavenly father. And that's why Jesus calls him our heavenly father. He knows declutter your mind declutter your mind so you could have a lot of space more space for god number three stay away from negative people and that one i can say till forever i'm telling you i could preach 10 i could preach a series i mean a message on this for like 10 weeks about staying away from negative people stay away from negative people. proverbs 13 verse 20 Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Stay away from negative people. The Bible says, and that this one is in Good News Translation. It says, keep company with the wise and you will become wise. If you make friends with stupid people, you will be ruined. Now, I cannot flog this, but we've said it like times without number that you are an average of the five people you regularly relate with. If you want to know who you are, just look at the five people who you regularly relate with, and you will know who you are. If the people you relate with are people who like to tell, bear, and gossip, that's who you are. If the people you relate with are people who, have, who are positive, and they're always going forward, that's who you are. You have, have, you, have, you, have you not wondered why a rich man we want to associate with rich people and you think oh you think oh maybe the rich people you know they like to associate with themselves they do not want anything to do with this they do not want to bring people into their circle they do not. why would they want to bring someone who is not thinking the way they are thinking into their circle why because they know that if you're coming in you have to be the way they are so you're an average of the five people you regularly work with. And if I want to tell you something, if I want to tell you something, the 2019 is a time of, I'm sorry, 2020 is a time of sober reflections. God slowed the world down in 2020. Slowed the world down so some of us could actually think. So some of us could actually cut off certain things. Because there are some things that you don't need to take them into 2021. But we're still carrying those baggages because, oh, I need to please this, I need to please that. And we're still carrying them. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And finally, I will say to you, don't give up. Do not give up. If you're going to stay positive, I mean, if you're going to have increase, you must stay positive. And the only way is not to give up. You know, what my mentor told me a couple of days ago, he said, it is, easy to say, it is easier to say no than to say yes. Do you want to do that? No. Do you want to get? No. It's very easy to say no than to say yes. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, and I, I have the scripture right here in my, 
okay, in, in, in the pouch of my phone. I carry it everywhere I go. The scripture, the scripture you're about to read, it's written here in my pouch. I carry because that's my word for the year 2020. That was what God told me. So you always see it at my, I have it in the pouch of my phone. It says, God said to me, and I don't know if he's telling you that today. He says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That scripture is here. I fold it and I put it in my pouch. And when I'm discouraged, I just bring it out and read it. God says, have I not commanded you? And sometimes I'm in places where, where I'm totally frustrated at times. But I just get in my, in my pouch and take out my scripture. Because that's my scripture for 2020. He says, have I not commanded you? He says, do not be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. I am with you. Wherever you go, God promises to be with you. Don't give up. It will soon be over. That problem, that challenge, whatever it is, it will soon be over. Remember that Elijah was a man who was anointed by God to do great exploits, but he, he gave up because Jezebel was after his life. And he got to a point where he said, well, look, I'm not even better than my father's. Let me just go. Let me go. I want to go. I don't know. Elijah was not due to go, but he wanted to go. And God told him, okay, if you want to go, it's no problem. Go and anoint Elisha in your place. And Elisha was the man who got the double portion of the anointing. So God does not want you to give up. Don't give up on God because God is not going to give up on you. You know the story of this man, and I know you know the man when I'm done reading this, the story of this man. A man, when he was seven, he was forced out of his home, and he had to support himself at age seven. At nine, his mom died. At 22, he lost his job and could not even get into law school. At 23, he was in debt. He had to be in debt because he wanted to be a partner to someone who had a small store, just a very small store. And then at 26, the same partner that he had, you know, the store that he went, the, the store that he was in and had a, uh, he was a partner to another person, that same partner died and he was in debt. So he had a very heavy debt over his head. And at 28, the girl he had been courting for four years, he had to tell her, will you marry me? And guess what? She said, no. At 37, he tried to get into the U.S. to be elected for the U.S. Congress. He was elected, yes, but two years after he failed. At 41, his four-year-old son died. At 45, he ran for Senate and he lost. At 47, he failed as a vice presidential candidate. At 51, he was elected president of the United States of America. And that is Abraham Lincoln. And we talk about him today till tomorrow. We only talk about how he made it to the top. We don't remember all that he had to go through. Because for some of us, we may have given up. If you're going to have increase, you need to stay positive. Do not give up. Do not give up. It may be tough, but remember, it will soon be over. The Bible says, greater is he who lives on your inside than he who is on the outside. So if God lives on your inside, know that your tomorrow is going to be all right. Let's rise. I wanted to just thank the Lord this morning because he's spoken to you and he's also spoken to me. Just appreciate him for the word that you've had to hear. Just, just appreciate him. Just say thank you, Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we've heard. Lord, we've heard from you. I don't know what you're going through, but I want you to just speak to the Lord. Whatever it is you're going through, just, just commune with God and say, God, I, I put everything. I lay it down before you. I lay it all down before you. I'm carrying a lot of burdens. I'm carrying a lot of weight. And these things are actually, these things are pressing me down. 
they're taking over my thought they're taking over my life but because I'm here I hand it over to you I, I laid before you I put put it right there before you I know you have what it takes to carry my burdens father carry my weight carry my weight today carry my burdens carry my burdens I don't know if you if you if you're pre presently going through a financial challenge you know, you're, you're seriously going through a financial challenge. You don't know what to do. You don't know. You may be listening to me. You may be uh, on the social media, wherever you are, but you're going through a, a financial challenge. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. The Lord says, I should tell you, just put your hope in me. Put your trust in me. Put your trust in me. Put your trust. Put your confidence in me. In that there is someone right now, you, you have a medical challenge. I could see God write that before my faith, uh, before my eyes. He writes a medical challenge. I don't know what the medical challenge is. I don't know who you're standing in for. I don't know what it is, but God puts it before me. And I need to say whatever God says, I should say. He said, you have a medical challenge. Whatever the medical challenge is, God says, I am going to write everything away completely wash them out you're gonna be healed you will be healed and you will testify you will testify and there's someone God told me you're here you're listening to me I don't know whether you're on the phone or you're on the social media or here in church God said you're afraid of everything you're always afraid you're fearful you're afraid you're not even sure you're gonna see 2020 you each time you go to bed you're scared everything scares you you're behind the wheels you're afraid is what God is telling me you you sit behind the wheel and even if you had to go just from home to work or home to the grocery store you're afraid every time you're behind the wheel you're afraid everything scares you but the Lord says I should tell you today that that fear is taking it over. It's taking it away completely. You don't have to be afraid anymore. You don't have to be afraid. And the Lord tells me there's someone here, you're bothered so much about your child. You're bothered, bothered about that child. In fact, this, I said this morning, the thought of that child kept on bringing in your heart. It has overwhelmed you. It's taking you over completely. It's taking you. God said I should tell you, dedicate that child to me dedicate choose a day and dedicate that child maybe the child has been dedicated before but God says I should tell you rededicate that child to me rededicate just take that child and redo a dedication service if you want a pastor to do it for you you could tell your pastor you could tell pastor if you're in church if it's a church member God says rededicate that child whoever that child is just rededicate like you're taking that child back to God like you did when the child was 40 days God says rededicate that child just take the child maybe the picture maybe the child is away from you I don't know who the child is I don't know who I'm talking to but I'm just talking as God leads me to talk so that child God says rededicate that child present the church just like Samuel's mother presented him to church and Jesus was presented to church God says rededicate that child to me and you will see me do wonders thank you father I hear a sound there is a shaking, the mighty power of a sovereign God is moving. Every dry bone is rising up again. Every dry bone is rising up again. I hear a sound, I hear a sound. The rain, the rain, the rain of abundance. There is a shift in the atmosphere. Every dry bone, every dry bone. Is rising up again. Every dry bone is rising up again. Precious Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you because you ministered to us today. Not of me, but all of you. I thank you because you were here at service and you had to speak to everyone, those that were home, those in church, and those on the social media. I give you all the glory be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we've heard from you. We choose to stay positive. And as we stay positive, oh God, 
let us experience that increase in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you visit every life here and those who will listen to me. Visit them in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your presence continue to abide with us. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. I want us to prepare our offering as the service comes to a close. I want you to prepare to give to the Lord and just prophesy in the seat that you have. Our text to give is on the screen. And if you're not using the text to give, you want to use a check, you could write that in the name of the church and it's going to get to the church. Now, let us just lift up that offering to the Lord and prophesy and ask that the Lord will bless whatever it is you're given. Some of us are coming in with our, our, our tithes and our offerings, we ask that the Lord will bless them today. The Lord will receive us and receive our offerings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for out of much you've given, we're given this little. We ask that you accept us and accept our offerings in the mighty name of Jesus. Precious Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's also remember that at 6, we will be having the bilingual program. It's coming up by 6. If you're on the phone, it's going to come through on the same conference number that you see scrolling down, uh, that it's being scrolled on the screen. It's, you're gonna, you can connect through that. And also, you can connect on Facebook channel. Gabriel. The Lord bless you and the Lord will increase you in the mighty name of Jesus. And until we see you next time, let's just rise and share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.